the Great Pyramid of Giza. Have you ever wondered what it's worth? Well, I have. And on Pricing the Priceless, I'm going to put a value on the last remaining ancient wonder of the world. I'm expecting to find something special in there. I'll be selling the pyramid off, stone by stone, in the souks of Cairo. Twelve and a half dollars, you're here thirteen. Daily. <laughs> Heading down Wall Street to figure out what city traders would buy it for. I could easily see going to three billion or a little bit more. And discovering how much it'll cost to move to a prime location where it'll make some serious cash. I mean, it's going to be beautiful right here. I'm Kevin Cook. I'm an engineer. And I'm fascinated by iconic buildings. They're often referred to as priceless. But as an engineer, I know that just about anything can be built for the right price. Great Pyramid, standing on the Giza Plateau, just west of Egypt's capital, Cairo. Built 4,500 years ago by some of the world's earliest advanced engineers, the ancient Egyptians. This was the largest and one of the most accurately constructed stone structures in the world, built to house the body of the Egyptian pharaoh, Khufu. I've been fascinated by this place ever since I was a kid. Now I've traveled almost 8,900 kilometers to see it. This is it! <laughs> I've waited an awfully long time to see this. The pyramid! For centuries, so many people have tried to understand this place. Historians, archaeologists, explorers. The one thing that nobody's ever tried to do is put a value on it. That's exactly what I intend, and here's how I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to scrap it. Of course, I'd never actually destroy this ancient monument. But by breaking it down, I'll get a better understanding of its sheer size, what it's made from, and what's in it. That's amazing! Second, I'm going to build it. I'm going to discover what a feat of engineering it was, and what it would cost to rebuild today. Finally, I'm going to buy it. To demonstrate just what a global icon it is, I'm going to calculate its value as a profit-making business and price up moving into a location where it could make even bigger bucks. Of course, for many, the Great Pyramid is priceless, but I know that numbers never lie, and by following the money, I'll get a whole new perspective on the feat of human achievement that it took to build this awesome monument. Anyway, I'm dying to find out what it's worth. So let's get started. First of all, I want to value the pyramid as a scrap merchant. And just look at this, it's a lot of stone. It's estimated the pyramid contains 2.3 million blocks of limestone, weighing in at a massive 5.75 million US tons. That much stone has got to be worth millions. But before I attempt to price it up, I'm meeting Dr. Zahi Hawass, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. There are a few people alive who know more about the Great Pyramid, and I want to find out if there's anything else he thinks I should be including in my scrap value. The pyramid, uh, all of it was cased with white, fine limestone that the ancient Egyptian brought it from a quarry called Torah, and uh, also was topped with a capstone that was cased with gold. 
the white casing stones transformed the pyramid into an awesome symbol of Egyptian power and showcased their devotion to the pharaoh. Inside the Great Pyramid is an ascending passage leading to Pharaoh Khufu's burial chamber. Now these walls either side, this is still limestone, correct? <laughs> Pharaohs were buried with food, clothing, jewelry and weapons to equip them for their journey into the afterlife. Islands were stolen. We have only this empty granite sarcophagus. The burial chamber was looted long ago, but Dr. Hawass wants to show me something the thieves couldn't carry away. This is not limestone. What stone is this? This is made of granite. Granite came from Aswan about 600 miles south of the pyramid. This room is so well engineered that no mortar was used. The blocks are so precise, they're just pressed together. They smooth the face of each stone and they put it like this. This is why you cannot even put a needle between each stone. How about a piece of paper? Nothing. I'm going to try this. Try. See? <laughs> that is, this is amazing work. the perfect structure of the Great Pyramid. <sighs> amazing. My first encounter with the Great Pyramid has been awe-inspiring. But there's still something I'm dying to ask Dr. Hawass. What's it worth? The pyramid is priceless. Priceless. If you bring all the treasures of the United States and the whole world and you put it in front of us, we'll tell you now, the Great Pyramid has more value than all the treasures of the world. Priceless? That's what he says, but I'm determined to put a scrap value on the pyramid. So what can I sell? Well, it turns out, if you want an ancient wonder, you need 8,000 US tons of granite and almost 6 million tons of limestone. That's gotta be worth something. I need to get my hands on a piece of pyramid stone and see what I can sell it for. Then, I can use that figure to calculate a scrap value for the whole pyramid. But the problem is, is that I just can't take a, a lump of limestone from the pyramid itself. Dr. Was, he, uh, yeah, he wouldn't be too happy about that. So, not too far away. Next best thing. This is the Tura Quarry, just south of Cairo. It's where Dr. Hawass told me the limestone for the Great Pyramid was mined four and a half thousand years ago. And it's still producing tons of the stuff. One thing that uh, is really getting to me is some of this limestone dust, it's so deep. It's almost like I'm walking through snow. A little bit difficult. Helping me cut my limestone block is British geologist Colin Reeder, who knows all about ancient Egyptian mining techniques. Ancient quarry men would have used the natural weaknesses in the limestone to the bedding planes. So they would have trenched around the three sides of the block down to the bedding plane, and along that face, driven wedges um, into the bedding plane. And basically pop the block up. I'm using a traditional metal pick called an adze. The 
ancient Egyptians had copper blades. Mine's steel, but it's still tough going. <laughs> this would literally take, even my little block, I can tell right now, it would take days and days and days to get it out. Well, this is not the one they had. What the Egyptians had was plenty of manpower and time. I mean, the only deadline was when the fur was going to die. Yeah, but it took years. In fact, it took them 23 years to build the Great Pyramid. I don't want to be here that long. Alan, this block just might do the job for me. That's the best thing you said all day. <laughs> So now that I've got my piece of Tura limestone, I need to find out what it's worth. Colin tells me that the best place to sell anything in Cairo is the mother of all markets, the Khan El Khalili Souk. Purely limestone. Yeah. I know you want some. Straight from Giza. Straight from Giza. I need to get an accurate price. So, for the sake of argument, I'm pretending my limestone block is a real piece of pyramid. How much? 11 American dollars? What do you 11 know? and a half. Do what I know here 12? What? what is 11 and a half? 12 and a half dollars. Do I hear 13? 10. Okay, I'll go up 16. 16 American dollars. Yeah. This is good. There, hold it. There, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, make me an offer. What do you think? Hundred dollars? Three hundred American dollars. For sale. I'm kind of happy with that offer. I think we're in the Hey, I'm an honest guy, so I didn't take the man's money. Although it was tempting. Now for some math. My limestone block weighs 11.8 kilograms. And I've been offered 150 US dollars for it. If I could sell all 5.75 million US tons in antique stones, my pyramid limestone would be worth a total of over $66 billion. That's a massive figure for a massive monument. But I'm worried my valuation will collapse if I try to sell it all at once. There's an antiquities dealer who will know for sure. And that means taking a journey back home to the U.S. I found an Egyptian antiquities dealer, and I'm here now, but apparently his collection is so impressive that I can't reveal his location. That was the only condition of us meeting. This will be interesting, but don't look. I'm attempting to put a price on the Great Pyramid to get a new perspective on the feat of human achievement it took to build. First, I want to know its scrap value. I have a limestone block from the same quarry that supplied the pyramid, and I'm taking it to an Egyptian antiquities dealer for valuation. Come in, how are you? Don. Good to see you. Thanks for seeing me. Please. Yes. Expecting you. John Ambrose owns nearly 300 exquisite objects from ancient Egypt, from decorated bracelets to hieroglyphic wall fragments over 2,000 years old. But there's one piece in this collection that is comparable to my limestone block. 14 centimeters of rope made from bulrushes dating back to just after the building of the Great Pyramid. Uh, amazing story on this rope. Um, this is a, honestly the last thing I would expect to see in a collection is a rope. <laughs> is a rope, yeah. This was actually found in the caves, which were the caves that is believed um, served as a source of limestone for the pyramids and the temple complexes around there. And as they went deep into the bowels of this cave, they discovered 168 feet, which was then sliced up and taken away as souvenirs. Egyptian artifacts. According to John, 
This tiny piece of rope is worth five thousand dollars. Wow! You are kidding about having. If my limestone block was a genuine piece from the Great Pyramid, what would he pay for it? Okay. Well, that's quite a task. Um, if it were legitimately, um, you know, exported out of Egypt with all the right paperwork and so forth, I think that's, um, you know, it's not decorative, it's not pretty, it's not beautiful in one sense, but I would say that not inconceivable that this would bring $5,000 in today's market. $5,000 for this? $5,000 for this block of pyramid limestone with certification. All right. $5,000. And I have almost six million tons of this stuff. Can I get a bulk deal at John's Antique Rates? Let's say I had uh, 100 blocks like this to sell. Uh, 100 blocks like this, you're probably in the neighborhood of maybe $1,000 per block. Let's say we have 1,000 blocks. How much would each block be worth? I would say you're probably talking a few hundred dollars per block. How about I had a million pieces of limestone? What are we talking now? A million stones. I had a million stones like this. How yeah. much would each block be worth? I think you're probably getting very close to the nominal cost of the raw materials. Hang on. If I flood the market with almost six million tons of antique pyramid limestone, it would be worth no more than ordinary limestone rock? If that's the case, what's ordinary limestone rock worth? And exactly how would I scrap an entire pyramid? Clinton Point Quarry, New York is where I'll find out. This is one of the biggest limestone quarries in the United States. These guys process 5 million U.S. tons of the stuff a year for the construction industry. That's almost a pyramid's worth every 12 months. Any man, any man would be excited to be able to play with explosives, right? Absolutely, yeah. You guys yeah, have yeah. to love your job. Oh, you don't love your job. Oh, I love my job. Um, <laughs> yeah. These guys will teach me everything I need to know about scrapping my pyramid. They select a seam in the quarry wall to blast, then drill 30 holes into the rock bed. How deep, how deep is this hole right here? 49 feet. 49 feet. 49 feet. Then they pump each hole with a mix of ammonia nitrate and fuel oil, a highly stable explosive. We have three layers of it, three lanes with ten holes in each one, and you have, you're putting explosives in each of these holes? Right, you're going to have 20 milliseconds between the holes down the front and 90 milliseconds between the holes in the row. They don't just all go off at once. No. The 30 explosions detonate milliseconds apart so that the blast is controlled and the rock face doesn't blow skywards. We set the charge and clear to a safe distance. has been fired. Oh, that's a big mound of rock. Yep. About 40, 45,000 tons. Is this a, a good shoot? Is this what you're looking for? Yeah. 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 I see rock. At 40,000 U.S. tons of blast, I'd have to do 144 of these explosions to scrap my pyramid. But what I have is millions of stones about this size. But they're all they're all squares. We crush them down to um, site manager Steve Brooks. He has big plans for my pyramid limestone. If I gave you all this limestone, huge blocks, millions of tons, yep. what would you do with it? Crush it. That's, that kind of sends me. If I have 5.75 million tons of this kind of limestone, what's the price? In this market, probably 20 bucks a ton. $20 a ton? And to add insult to injury, this beautiful monument would be crushed into gravel for roads or sold to the construction industry as an aggregate. At least now I can calculate an accurate scrap value for the pyramid. 5.75 million U.S. tons of limestone 
at 20 bucks a ton, plus 8,000 tons of granite, also at 20 bucks a ton, gives me a scrap value for the Great Pyramid of Giza at 115 million US dollars. There it is, my first valuation. Lower than I expected, but still a huge price, which reveals the sheer volume of raw material that went into building this great monument. I have a number. How much the pyramid is worth, uh, scrap, but there's another way to do this. I'm going to work out how much it's going to cost to rebuild the pyramid today from scratch. I'm talking about the materials, labor, everything. Now I want to get a new perspective on the feat of human achievement it took to construct the Great Pyramid of Giza. So I'm going to price up the job of building it. It took about 23 years to build the pyramid and an awful lot of people to put it together. But who were these people? Were they forced laborers? Were they volunteers? Uh, more importantly, what I need to know is how many people were there. For centuries, it was believed the Great Pyramid was constructed by 100,000 slaves. If I wanted to build it today, I'd have to pay the national minimum wage. And for 100,000 people, over 23 years, that would cost over $32 billion. But new evidence suggests a different kind of workforce was used. In 1990, a site was uncovered stretching nearly five kilometers west of the Great Pyramid. This is the land where the men who built the pyramid were buried. At these workers' tombs, Dr. Zahi Hawass found the men were not slaves. They were well fed and provided with the kind of medical care reserved for a workforce hard to replace. In one of the skull, we discovered that the person he had a cancer and they did a brain surgery for him and he lived for two years after that. Brain surgery over 4,000 years ago. 4,500 years ago. Wow, that's very and impressive. And the second important thing that we found, someone, his leg was cut twice, and they did a surgery for his leg. And he lived with this surgery for 14 years. Dr. Hawass found a vital clue that helped him determine the size of the workforce. The clue wasn't what they ate. The workmen who built the pyramid, they can't eat bread, drink beer all the time. They, they need meat to be strong, to move the stones. And we found evidence that they slaughter every day 11 cows and 33 goats. And this can feed 10,000 workmen a day. This is good. I like that you have a, a very definitive answer as to how yeah. many. This is a very important number to me, and the answer is 10,000. Not much of a question about it, is there? So I've got 10,000 skilled workers, not 100,000 slaves. I need to find out how much it would cost to build a 146 meter high pyramid with almost 6 million US tons of limestone and 8,000 tons of granite with a workforce of 10,000 men using the same ancient techniques over a period of 23 years. Yeah, I think I need help. Yeah, well. Buddy, it's Kevin Cook. Kevin, how are you today? Robert Buddy Barnes is chairman of one of the largest stone and masonry construction companies in the United States. I know my request was outrageous, but have you had time to come up with a final number for him? We have. Uh, we've broken it into 98 different teams doing different tasks. And then the granite material and the limestone materials ran 2 billion 
$254 million. Buddies thought of everything, from the cost of rope to move the stone, to the feed for the oxen pulling it. But there's one number I'm just dying to find out. So what is the final number? What's the total cost for building this pyramid for trash? Total cost for $57 billion. $741 million U.S. dollars. That's a lot of U.S. dollars. So the cost of rebuilding the Great Pyramid of Giza using the same techniques as the ancient Egyptians is $7.7 .7 billion. A huge number and testament to the huge feat that building the pyramid was. But with 4,500 years of technological advancement, I wonder what price modern engineering would put on building a modern Great Pyramid. This is the Walter Pyramid in Long Beach, California. Can modern design compete with the ancients? To find out, I'm here to price up a contemporary pyramid. Architect Don Gibbs built it 16 years ago. It's the home of Cal State University basketball team. You know, from the outside, this is obviously a pyramid, but from in here, it's hard to tell where each wall starts and stops. Far from being solid limestone, this has a lightweight steel frame supporting a galvanized corrugated steel shell. Don, why on earth would you choose a pyramid for a sports complex? Well, I'm just a sucker for geometric abstractions, and the, the biggest one that I've ever seen is Giza. That's dynamite. You've been there? Yes, it's so great you can't believe it. It's such a strong piece, and it's abstract, and it has this base of sand. goes forever, and it's lasted forever. It's amazing. The Walter Pyramid's only half the height of the Great Pyramid, and only half the width. It's 105 meters long and 58 meters high. But instead of taking 23 years to build, this was finished in 18 months. Is this a step forward in pyramid building? I need to know what it cost. $25 million. That's it? That's it. That's cheap for a pyramid. To rebuild it the same size as the Great Pyramid, Don tells me it would cost $116 million. So, is this a better valuation than the $7.7 .7 billion using ancient techniques? Are we better pyramid builders than the Egyptians? Well, there's a catch. I've got two costs to rebuild the Great Pyramid of Giza. $7.7 .7 billion using ancient Egyptian techniques, and only $116 million if I build it in the style of the modern Walter Pyramid. But which value should I choose? The Walter Pyramid is cheaper, but is it better? Can this structure withstand the Egyptian desert for four and a half thousand years, just like the original? I've come to Cal State Long Beach in the shadow of the Walter Pyramid to meet doctors Barr and Golshani, who built me a miniature of the real thing. These guys usually stress test aeroplanes, but today they're going to work out how many years a modern metal pyramid will last in the desert. The miniature is made of the same 6 millimeter galvanized steel as the big one and has an identical coating of fluoride paint. We will be uh, exposing the pyramid to uh, wind velocities of different uh, types uh, uh, which simulate uh, different sandstorms. Using a sand blaster, we're going to simulate weather conditions on Egypt's Giza Plateau. So we're going to start with 12 miles per hour and then we bump up the speed about 40 miles per hour, and that happens probably every year. The Great Pyramid has survived 45 centuries of sandstorms. Let's see if his modern rival can match that.
19 kilometers per hour, the speed of an average daily desert wind, and the fluorite coating stays intact. We boost the sandblaster up to 64 kilometers per hour. It doesn't take long for the protective coating to fade as it's stripped off. A storm like this happens once a year. Now, just removing the paint, that's, uh, is that detrimental? Oh, yes, 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 yes. The, the whole coating is done to stop corrosion. Corrosion, the deadly enemy of any man-made structure. Within one year, a single 64 kilometer per hour sandstorm would strip the paint, leaving the steel exposed to the corrosive forces of the desert. The research team hit the lab to calculate exactly how many years these materials will last. The steel is heated and cooled in a thermal chamber to simulate the extreme temperature range of one day in the desert. These expansion and compression values are fed into a second machine which subjects another sample to one day's stresses thousands of times. The team calculates it will take up to seven years to weaken the galvanized coating from the steel. In another seven, the exposed metal will be severely corroded. Their final conclusion? The Walter Pyramid will last no more than 15 years in the Egyptian desert before it's toast. 116 million dollars isn't such good value if you need your pyramid to last for 4,500 years. So, for my second price, I'm going to play it safe and go with the Egyptian design. After all, it's tried and tested. But, it comes with a price tag of a cool 7.7 .7 billion dollars. The lesson is, don't try to better the ancient pyramid builders. They knew what they were doing. And so to my final valuation. I want to know what the Great Pyramid would be worth to me as a city trader looking to make some cash from it. I mean, people visited from all over the world. Surely it makes a tidy sum. Now, I'm an engineer, so I know how to work with numbers, but I'm not entirely sure how to use them to put a value on a business. So I've come to New York City, financial juggernaut of the world, because to be honest, I'm going to need a little help. Vince Farrell is a Wall Street analyst with 40 years' experience in valuing assets. And how much is the pyramid worth in terms of of being a business. Okay. Well, you're going back there, aren't you? Oh, yeah. yeah, terrific. Well, uh, ordinarily what you'd want is a pretty good breakdown of what the revenues are. You know, the revenues for the Great Pyramid would be, I guess, ticket sales, how much they get in the uh, souvenir sales. If you get the revenues, uh, what we need is a pretty good breakdown on the cost. Uh, what is security cost? What is maintenance cost? Uh, any breakdown you can get. Uh, and, and then we have the total revenue package. So what you need from me, you need me to collect the information. You need some numbers from me about the cost and the revenue base and as detailed as I can possibly get. The interest team will crunch the numbers I come up with and put an accurate value on the pyramid as a working business. It sounds like you're actually going to do the hard work for me. I'm do the hard work for All I have to do is collect the data. You just go take care of the rest. Well, you got to go into Egypt. I know it's hot over there. <laughs> So it's back to Egypt. Cairo, here I go. The Great Pyramid is one of the world's most famous monuments. It's got to be a profit-making business. Tourists from all over the globe travel here to spend their hard-earned cash. To find out what this icon is worth, I need a breakdown of the revenue and costs. Let's start with the money the pyramid makes from tourism. Income. As soon as
soon as the tourists get here, they start spending. Annual ticket sales total $32.2 million. 100 pounds inside the pyramid. It makes $49 million in souvenir sales and receives $17.5 million in annual donations as a World Heritage Site. And there are loads of other ways to make money. Cowboy ride? This place is a gold mine. But how much does it cost to run? Maintenance, security, utilities, insurance, restoration, and wages for 1,500 staff come in at a bargain, $6 million a year. This ancient wonder is looking like a very attractive business to provide. I email Vince the data to crunch. This should be everything he needs to price the Great Pyramid. Hello? Hello, Vince. Kevin. All right, I gave you some numbers before, and uh, I'm hoping you might have had time to do some calculations. I did, yeah. Very interesting, but I've, I've come up with some numbers, right? The pyramid generates $100 million in revenues, and labor costs being as low as they are in uh, Egypt, it only costs about $6 million a year to operate it. See, if we bought it for whatever price, we could pocket $94 million a year. Now, what else could give us $94 million a year? No business on record has lasted as long as the pyramid. So Vince needs to think of an investment most likely to make $94 million a year for the next 4,500 years. The closest thing there is? U.S. government AAA bonds. The most stable investment around. So I could buy $2.35 billion in bonds at 4% to generate roughly $94 million. So $2.35 billion is Vince's figure for buying the pyramid as a business. And the good news is, I'd make my money back in 25 years and still own the pyramid. But Vince thinks I could increase its value if I moved it away from the Egyptian desert to somewhere it'll make even bigger bucks. And that's not going to be cheap. Luckily, moving ancient stone structures, it's been done before. Right here in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Back in 1968, London Bridge was actually falling down. It had to be replaced. Spotting the chance to grab a piece of history, American oil tycoon Robert P. McCulloch bid $2.46 million to buy it. Then he shipped it piece by piece from England, across the Atlantic, through the Panama Canal, up to California, and trucked it to the desert. A journey of 16,000 kilometers. London Bridge became an instant tourist attraction. This is exactly what I want to do with the Great Pyramid. So I'm meeting an engineer involved with the move, Val Stryl. Val. Yeah, good morning. Welcome to the London Bridge. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So what do we got here? Well, we got 10,000 tons of stone. <laughs> That's a lot of stone. Yeah. 10,000 U.S. tons. A fraction of the weight of the Great Pyramid, but still impressive. Is this bridge similar to the way it was when it was back in London? Identical. Yeah? Yeah, all the stones went right back to where they were when they were put when they fall down. Now, how do they keep it all organized? Well, they were all numbered. Every stone had a number. Oh, so it's like putting a puzzle back together. Yes, it really was. The bridge even has its original battle scars from the Blitz bombing raids during World War II. How much did it cost to relocate the London Bridge all the way here? 
I think it was two million five five fifty five. Two million five five. All right. All right. And we had a budget for three million dollars, and we come in under. You didn't spend it all. Nope. <laughs> you you made somebody really happy with that. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, my friend. Let's see what kind of a budget my pyramid move is going to need. London Bridge cost 160 bucks a kilometer to move. The Great Pyramid has 575 times more stone and needs to be moved from Egypt to the United States, a distance of 8,900 kilometers. Add inflation since 1968, and I'm looking at a cost to relocate the pyramid of 5.1 billion dollars. Justify this huge cost, I need to locate it in a spot where it'll immediately start to generate top tourist dollars. I need to find some place to put the pyramid. It needs to be an open area, five hectares. I want lots of people to get there, so that means a city, preferably an iconic city. Yeah, I know where to put it. I'm pricing up the cost of buying the Great Pyramid of Giza. I'm moving it from Egypt and have found it a new home in the U.S. Central Park, New York City. It's the perfect place to find lots of tourists with money to spend. And is the only spot in Manhattan large enough to house my new purchase. Charles. Oh, you're Kevin, right? Yep. Hey. Pleasure to meet you. This is this is really crazy what you're thinking about here. <laughs> Charles McKinney is one of the top city planners. You don't build anything in the Big Apple without running it past his office. How many people have propositioned you to uh, move a gigantic stone pyramid into Central Park? Oh, you're the first. Charles is going to help me choose a spot for the Great Pyramid. With the base measuring 230 meters squared, it has a footprint the size of seven soccer pitches. There's only one possible space. Oh, is this it? This is it. I can see it. This might work. This is Sheep Meadow, one of the most popular open spaces in the park. Once Charles and I have measured out the pyramid base, there may not be much room left for somebody. You know, it looks like a lot of space, but... It's going to be really tight. How about the fence? We better be close. All right, Charles. I'm at the fence. Tell me I'm uh, tell me I'm close to 756 feet. 740 feet, over. Thank you. So now I'm heading over the perimeter fence. Alright, it is like path. Okay, hold on. Okay, 756. Over. Great, thanks a lot. Over. So that's one side of my support base position. Now to see if the other side fits. As I head off at a right angle, I meet some potential visitors to my new attraction. You know the Great Pyramid in, uh, in yeah, Egypt, the little big one? Yeah. What would you think if I uh, I put it in this park? Good idea or bad idea? Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. Awesome idea. That's an awesome that's idea. I like you. I yeah. like you. Yeah. You've got to lose a lot of tourist that's money. That's how they make a lot of their money. But see, the thing is that I'm going to buy it, so I'm going to give them a lot of money. And how would you that you would have to like ship it piece by piece by piece? Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. smart kids. I'm moving on. Maybe I should have consulted New York schoolgirls earlier. Alright, Charles. I leveled up. Give me a reading, please. Over. Looks, looks good, actually. 756. Alright, 756 feet. It fits. The pyramid fits in Sheep Meadow. I mean, I can see it right now. Boom. So here it is, New York's very own Great Pyramid. 
bought from Egypt at a Wall Street price of $2.35 billion. Then shipped stone by stone at a cost of over $5 billion to New York, where I'm confident I can make a huge profit to justify the huge price. Which means I can reveal a grand total of nearly seven and a half billion dollars. My final valuation. It's a big price that shows the Great Pyramid's potential as a business and its status as a global icon. Thanks a lot for your help. I wouldn't have been That's able to... That's not a permission. I haven't given you permission. You no. just agreed to the feasibility. Right, you are my guy. Thank you for guiding me, sir. Okay. I appreciate it. He'll come around. This has been a crazy ride all the way from Egypt and Africa to both sides of the United States. But this is all about putting a price tag on the Great Pyramid. I mean, it boils down to the numbers. And we have three of them coming at you from completely different angles. The scrap value of the Great Pyramid, $115 million. The cost of rebuilding it, just as the ancient Egyptians did, is over seven and a half billion dollars. And the price to buy it and ship it to New York City is just under seven and a half billion. Massive prices for a massive chunk of history. And I, for one, think it's worth every cent. But hey, the Egyptians aren't selling, and why would they? Because to them, this awesome monument remains a priceless symbol of their nation and its proud past. Seeing this pyramid has been on my list of things to do for my entire life, and it feels great to be able to cross it off. Brand new pricing the priceless attempts to value the Eiffel Tower at the same time next week.